Hey guys, it's Glassboxed here and today we're going to discuss Git branching. We're going to talk about what branching is and what it means and why someone would want to use branches in their Git project. We're going to talk about the values branching brings and the reasons someone would actually want to create a branch. So before we talk about branching, there's something really important to understand. So far, we've been doing a lot of stuff in our Git project. We've been moving files, uh, changing them, you know, committing them, so on. But there's something we haven't discussed, not in detail anyway. It's this word here, this, uh, this word that says master inside these brackets. So what is this? So if you've noticed, the title of the directory where our project sits in is Git project. But this master is not part of that directory name. In other words, this master doesn't appear as part of the title of that directory. So where is this coming from? In a Git project, we have what is called the, well, you can call it your baseline code. This is code that is the final version of a given code. Let me put it a different way. When you write code or, or files or anything, the contents of a given project in Git. When we talk about file versioning, so say a file can have a given version, as we've kind of seen in, in great detail through these tutorial videos, a very similar concept can apply to your entire project. An entire project can also have a version. So at the moment, our project is sitting in this version called the master version. The master version is treated as the final version of your project. It is assumed to be bug free and litter free and all the to do's and the, and the notes have all been tackled in some shape or form. When we talk about the master version of your code base or the master version of your project, what we're basically saying is everything that exists in that project is in a state whereby it is ready to be shipped out, ready to be consumed by clients, the public, whichever way you want to see it. So when we say master, what we're basically saying is master is the state of a project in its entirety, as opposed to the state of individual files. Although master can contain and it does contain versioning of individual files, this particular thing is more pertinent to your entire project. So what does this mean then? In relation to say branching, what does this actually mean? See master is, if you like, the baseline version of your entire project. And when we talk about git branching, what we're basically saying is a branch is another way of saying that we want to create another version of this master version. For example, we can say we want to create another version uh, which is going to consist of exactly the same files as the master version and then we're going to work on that version of the project instead of master version. Now why would someone want to do that? Why would someone want to create another version of a project? It seems kind of really silly, right? If you think about it. You've got a version, everything's fine, why not just work on it? What's the point of creating another branch? We'll get to that in a bit. So the first thing we're going to do is actually do what's called uh, listing all of our existing branches. So if you want to do that, all you do is say git branch. So notice that the only thing that came back was master and it's got a star next to it. So when we get this list, so when we say git branch, git branch will try to list all of the existing branches that you have locally on your machine. So at the moment we only have one branch and it's called master and it's got a star next to it. When it has a star next to it, that means that is the current branch you're on. So the star indicates the current branch that you're on. So let's go ahead and create a new branch. To create a new branch is very straightforward. You say git branch and then the name of your new branch. So in this case, I'm going to call it demo. So now if I say git branch, it is now giving me 
two branches in the list. There's a branch called demo and there's a branch called master. Now, when we created this branch, demo, demo is an exact duplicate, identical copy of the master branch. So now we are on a state where we have two different branches. We've got a master branch, which we are still on because the star indicates the current branch that we're on. And then we've got another branch called the demo, which we've created, but we haven't really done anything with. Before we try and do anything with the branch, let's just try to delete the branch. Let's just assume that at some point we wanted to use the branch for some purposes, but we decided not to use it in the end. We can delete the branch. To delete the branch is quite simple. You do the same thing. You say git branch minus capital D. Minus capital D in this state means delete. And then we give the name of the branch. Notice that it says deleted branch and then the name of the branch, which is demo. So if we do git branch now, it only says master. So this is how we can create a branch and delete a branch. Anyway, let's go ahead and recreate a, the branch. So let's just say git branch and let's give this a name. Let's say something like yt demo, as in YouTube demo. And we say git branch. We can now see that the branches have been listed, master and yt demo. We currently know that we're on master branch as indicated by the star, but we want to be on this branch. So let's get onto that branch. How can we change branches? How can we, you know, check out a different branch? To do that, you say git checkout and then the name of your branch. And notice it says switched to branch YouTube demo or yt dash demo. If we now do a git branch, notice it says that there are two branches and I am on this branch as indicated by the star and the green text. But also notice something very important. This has now changed from master to yt slash demo. This is now saying, oh, okay, you're on a different branch. This is a way of git basically telling you what is your current branch i.e. what is the current branch that you are currently working on. So this is how we can create a branch and switch to a new branch. So let's answer that important question. Why would we need to create more branches? What is the point of creating new branches? This branch I've called yt-demo. So in my head, when I created the branch, the purpose of this branch was just to do some experimental things. I don't really want to do anything that I actually want to push as part of my master project. This is just something that I want to do as a pure experiment. So if you do something like this, git status, then it says there's nothing to submit. Good. So let's open up our project. Okay. So let's go to this folder and let's just delete this file, for example. Doesn't really matter. And now let's do a git status. Notice it's saying that the file is deleted. I mean, yeah, we know that. We know we're just we don't really care. We're making changes on a branch which isn't master. So this branch is purely for experimental purposes. We're trying to do stuff, we're trying to try stuff out. This is not touching our main code, our main version, our main copy of our project. This is just stuff we're playing around with. Okay? So, okay, I've deleted the file, you know, oh well, no problem. It doesn't matter. I'm not on my main branch. I can always go back to master and create another version of this. So, okay, no problem. Uh, what I'll do is I will go ahead and uh, commit this anyway. So I'm going to say git add, and I'm just going to say full stop. Here, it means everything. We've only changed one file, so it makes no difference. If I do a git status again, then we know it's gone up to staging. And now if I do a git commit minus M and just say removing file. Okay. And let's do git log. And I can see that the file was removed. Fine. You know, no problem. Now let's just assume that we've made a number of different changes, you know, multiple changes. We were trying to try out something. And in the end, it looked like, you know, oops, it didn't work out. 
you know, the stuff I wanted to do just hasn't worked out. The beauty of creating branches in this instance was that by creating a branch, we had the ability to have a copy of our master code in a place where there was literally no ramifications of doing anything bad. We had full ability to go crazy. We could delete anything, we could add anything. It really wouldn't affect our main code. See, this is now committed, right? This file is now on the project repository. It's, it's there, we can't do anything about it. The only way to say revert this is to basically revert the file by getting it from the previous commit, assuming it exists there. But the beauty of creating a branch is that I have the ability to do whatever I want, however I want to do it. And it doesn't really affect me in any great way. I can just carry on experimenting and, you know, I don't really have to worry about it. Now, let's just say we've done our experiment. We've found that things may have worked out the way you wanted to. They may not have. Doesn't matter. If you've noticed in this git log, we have a git log that says, and this is our most recent commit. It says removing file. We have another git log, which is the log from our master version of the code or of our project. So what I'll do is I'm going to check out our master version again. So git check out master and notice it's just switched back to master. Okay. Now let's do a git log. Notice on master, we do not have that commit. We do not have this removing file commit because we didn't commit it on our master branch. So let me do that again. Git checkout yt demo and then git log. We can see that we committed this. We removed a file and we are now on the yt demo branch. Let's go back to master and do a git log. And notice that commit is now not there because that commit does not exist on this master branch. So you should be able to see the benefit of having a different branch. It gives us the ability to completely create a 100% identical version of our project somewhere else within our local project, but not affect anything. It gives us the ability to experiment, to try things out, to do whatever we want. Now, let's just say, you know, I've done my experiment, no problem. Let's do a git branch. Okay, there's the other branch. Great, I don't need it anymore. The experiment I wanted to do, it all worked out. And today, as a person, I now have a great understanding of the problem I'm trying to solve and the solution I want to apply. So, okay, for, for now, I don't need the branch. So what am I gonna do? I'm going to simply delete that branch. And there you go. So today, we've done a lot of things. We've learned how to create a branch. We've learned how to delete a branch. But the most important lesson today is we've learned about the concepts and reasoning of actually using branches. Had we not created a branch, we would have ended up deleting that file. And yes, we could have very easily reverted that file. It would not have been a problem at all. However, assume that you've changed, you know, many files, not one, we're talking tens, hundreds possibly, and you ended up committing that. Yes, you can revert it very easily, but the problem is just that you would have to go and revert it. There are a lot of things you would have to go back and revert. If you create a different branch, then you don't really have that problem anymore. You can do whatever you want. Your main version of the code will be completely unaffected. It will not be touched. So I hope you've learned the absolute great advantages someone gets from creating a branches. There are other things obviously to discuss. Let's just say we've created a branch and we've done a lot of changes and we actually want to now use those changes in our project. What can we do? We can do what's called uh, merging the 
branch into your master work. But that is a topic for another day. All I'm saying is don't take the lesson from this video that, you know, the idea is you do a branch and then you throw it away. No. It is entirely possible to actually combine two different branches. But again, that is another subject for another day. Today, the most important lesson is this. Creating branches is a good thing. It helps you to manage your projects. It helps you to experiment. But more importantly, it stops you from accidentally polluting the main version of your project. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, ciao. Hi guys, it's Glassboxed here and I really appreciate you guys watching my video. And if you've liked it, then give it a thumbs up. If you already haven't, hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date with my latest video releases covering all aspects of technical testing. Also, follow me on Twitter and Google. Links in the description below. Until next time, ciao.